this you understand how randomly yesterday i said i wish i could read my bible along with other people and share my thoughts as i'm reading so i decided why not start a youtube channel and hence we have read with chidi um if you're from instagram yeah that's the backstory um yes we'll get right into it because the whole idea is for this to take about 20 minutes daily so that's why we're using a one-year plan right so that we don't have so much to read per day so as we read feel free to drop comments in the chat box so this is supposed to be an interactive bible reading type thing all the times that you've been reading your bible and you're thinking oh more these bible people they are one kind this is the opportunity to share it live with other people and you know get um your thoughts the main or the important the important thing is that we remember that the reason why we remember the reason why we study the bible we are looking through the bible to see the person of christ right we know that the new testament is in the old testament concealed and the old testament is in the new testament revealed so we are seeing the person of christ through both the old and new testament we also know that all scripture is what profit is profitable is inspired by god is given by the inspiration of god is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness so we are reading together with all of that in mind now that i have given all this backstory we go right into it so if you have subscribed to the youtube channel already a link to the bible plan we are using is there on the youtube channel um so please click that link you know open the U version version you would see the bible plan there but it's very simple so today's plan is supposed to be genesis 1 2 3 and then matthew 1 um what else if you see the plan the plan says we are supposed to start yesterday that was out of my excitement i clicked yesterday as the start date today is actually the start date so for from now until however long this takes it's supposed to be a one-year plan from now until however long this takes we are going to to look like we are one day behind but we are not so yeah let's get right into it i'm super excited i'm sure you can tell yes um we are reading the bible together talking about it together as we read and you know seeing christ through the scriptures starting today with genesis chapter 1 genesis chapter 1 verse 1 from verse 1 in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters and god said let there be light and there was light and god saw the light that it was good and god divided the light from the darkness and god called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. You know, this is one thing I noticed about the Bible. It counts evening and morning as one day rather than morning and evening. You know how we start counting the day from morning? In that, in the Bible times, they started counting from evenings. And this will have, this also, you will notice it when they talk about the 11th hour, the 10th hour of the day. So recently, somebody was talking up to, with me about how, you know, people talk about 11th hour miracle. And it sounds to them like they're talking about, you know, it's almost midnight before the day is over. 11th hour in Bible times was 5 p.m. Our time now. So, yeah. Reading this again, that came to mind. How evening and morning were one day rather than morning to evening. I'll continue. Verse 6. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters from that which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, 
and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the third day and God said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so and God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and he made the stars also and God set them in the firmament of, hev of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day it has always thrilled me how this is the fourth day and it is this fourth day that God is creating the sun and moon and stars, the lights in the have in the sky, the lights in the firmament of heaven. Verse sixteen says, "And God made two great lights: the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night." That makes you realize. But from day one, God had said, "Let there be light," and there was light. But it's on day four that God is creating the two great lights. Half hours going on. What was the light? This is something that I've studied. I've, I had to, you know, ask questions and look through and. I don't know if you've ever asked yourself this question before. If you have and, you know, somebody explained to you, you can share in the, in the chat or in the comments what you understood as the, the reason why light was made on the fourth... Sun and moon were made on the fourth day, but there had been light since the first day. The summary of my understanding of it is the light existed because God said, let there be light. He did not need to create sun and moon for there to be light he spoke it into existence and it happened in existence that is god that is who god is he speaks into existence and it comes into existence so he didn't need to create the sun and moon before light could exist so sun and moon came up for telling of time for us that would be here right back to reading verse 20 it says and God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his, his kind. And God saw that it was good. 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image. And after our likeness and let them have dominion over the sea, fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them and god blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful and multi multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth and god said behold i have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for, for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. 
And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had caused it to re- had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground. Mm. I thought in Genesis 1, he had created male and female, and he said it was good. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. I thought you made man in chapter 1. What is this you are making in chapter 2? Well, my understanding of this is that in chapter 1 was man that was made. What was happening in chapter 2 was, you know, the physical forming of man. What happened in chapter 1 was the speaking of man into existence, the spirit of man. Am I having that right or I'm forgetting my understanding say in the comments what you understand is happening in genesis chapter 2 versus what had happened in chapter 1 verse 8 says and the lord god planted a garden eastward in eden and there he put the man whom he had formed and out of the ground made the lord god to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the river went out from eden to water the garden and from thence it was parted and became into four heads the name of the first is peace python that is it which compassed the whole land of havila where there is gold and the gold of that land is good there is delium and the onyx stone and the name of the second river is gihon the same is it that compassed the whole land of ethiopia and the name of the third is hidekel which is it that goeth toward the east of Assyria and the fourth river is Euphrates and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it and the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam. Again, see, God has spoken and said that the beast, the fowl, all of them should exist. And now in Genesis chapter 2 verse 19, it's saying, Out of the ground, God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord, took, which the Lord had taken from man made he a woman. And brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone, bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, and this is always the trick of the devil, he will not outrightly say, do this thing. He will question what you already know to be true. He will question what you already know to be a lie. Is it really a lie? Did God really say Is it really true? Have you examined it? Look at it from this angle. That's the devil's style most of the time when it comes to temptation. 
So he said, had God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Of course, that's not what God said. Verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree of, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Where did God say, you should not even touch it, lest ye die? Anyway, this is this is classic reported speech. Maybe that's what Adam told her. That God said, don't even touch. If you touch it, you will die. Feels like when our parents will say, if you allow a man to hug you, you are finished. You will get pregnant. Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Notice that before this, this conversation with the serpent, she did not see it as pleasant. But after he had, you know, told her, look at it from this angle, really, really look at it, check it from this side. She now saw it as something as good, as nice, something to make you wise. That's what the enemy does. He would, you know, come with questions and suggestions and ideas. And before you know it, you will think that by yourself, you are seeing this matter from a different angle and you think it's not that bad. It's not that it's not that deep it's not that cuts it off once the devil is bringing his ideas don't just shake your head like mm. use your words say i rebuke you devil i rebuke this idea i rebuke this thought because if you allow it fester you begin to see that same thing as something that is not that bad something that can be nice if you look at it from a different angle verse 7 and the eyes of both of them now she and her husband have eaten and the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. The last verse, um, the last verse of the previous chapter said they were both naked and they were not ashamed. Now this is verse seven of chapter three, and it says, "And their eyes were opened, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife." hid themselves for the from the presence of the lord god among the trees of the garden that's what disobedience brings that's what sin brings shame and the lord god called unto adam and said unto him where art thou and he said i heard a voice in the garden and i was afraid because i was naked and i hid myself and he said who told thee that thou was naked who told you has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gave me, gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me. <laughs> the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. And here comes the hard part. The part that when people read Genesis 3, they wonder, what does this mean? Why is God being so harsh? Verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now people have, you know, argued was there a real serpent? Was there a real tree, in fact? Did these things exist or was it just figurative and blah, blah? Oh, if there was a real serpent, it's not the serpent itself. Now, it's the devil. Why did he curse the serpent and on and on? Yes, the serpent was not the devil. The devil was a spirit, right? And in this, my understanding of this is the serpent was operating in the devil rather was operating in the serpent right because the serpent already the bible has said was one of the most was most subtle animal in the garden right he was subtle and you know how knew how to approach man and of course animals don't talk right the devil was operating through the serpent and yeah this um whole thing happened and then the curse was placed on the serpent because he was the tool right 
and so the if but then when you look at the details of what god said here you understand he wasn't even referring directly to the serpent as in the snake but to the devil because in verse 15 he says and i will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it will bruise thy head and that will bruise his heel right unto the woman he said i will greatly multiply thy sorrow and I concept before we go into verse 16 so in verse 15 there you can understand that it wasn't necessarily just talking about the serpent because when you read further and you consider how genesis 3 features in the new testament you understand what verse 15 is saying and her, her seed he shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel if you understand what isaiah was saying about the the devil's head being bruised if you read fully the new testament you will read the explanation of it but of course we are going to get to all of that because we are going to read through the entire bible verse 16 unto the woman he said i will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy con in and thy conception in sorrow shall thou bring forth children and thy desire should, shall be to thy husband and he shall have and shall rule over thee and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and also thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for thus thou art, and unto thus thou shalt return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothed them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever, Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turns every way to keep the way of the tree of life. If there did not exist an actual tree, why did he put <clears throat> cherubims at the entrance to the garden? That's another question to ask yourself when they tell you that. It was a figurative tree. Anyway, that does it for Genesis 1, 2, and 3. We are going straight to Matthew chapter 1, which is the last reading for today before we call it a night. Um, have you enjoyed our, our Old Testament reading for today? Please let me know in the chat. Let's hear what's going on in your head about Genesis 1 to 3. Matthew chapter 1 is a very interesting chapter to read. I'm going to try not to bite my tongue as I go about reading the genealogies because Matthew chapter 1 is filled with genealogies. So come with me as we go. Matthew chapter 1, the genealogy of Christ. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac and Isaac begat Jacob and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. And Judas begat Phares and Zara of Tama, and Phares
okay i hope you can hear me now we are wrapping up we should finish within the next five to six minutes i was on matthew chapter 1 verse 17 please join right back in if you're still here um yes so verse 17 so all the generations from abraham to david are 14 generations and from david until the current reign to babylon are 14 generations and from the carrying into babylon to christ are 14 generations <gasps> that does it for the ge genealogy this begat that and verse 18 of matthew chapter 1 says now the birth of jesus christ was on this wise when as his mother mary was espoused to joseph before they came together she was found with child of the holy ghost then joseph for her hus then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. So he found out, hey, this girl of Gebele, what shall I do? I don't want to know what it is this lady has done, but I'm going to put her away privately so that I don't embarrass her in the public. So even though she has done me this wicked thing, she has given me this breakfast, I'm going to be nice. And just put her away privately and he had planned in his mind verse 20 but while he thought on these things behold the angel of the lord appeared unto him in a dream saying joseph thou son of david fear not to take unto thee mary thy wife for that which is conceived in her is of the holy ghost and it, and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name jesus for he shall save his people from their sins hallelujah now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying behold a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us this was this is from Isaiah I believe then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not until she had brought forth their firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Ble May God bless the reading of his word. That does it for today's Bible reading. We did Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 3, and Matthew chapter 1. I will put this up on the YouTube channel immediately um, we are done so that we can have it there and tomorrow we'll continue on youtube tomorrow we'll be on youtube not on instagram we used instagram today because youtube was giving issues so please do well to join me again 9 p.m tomorrow on youtube the link is on my bio join on youtube subscribe to the channel so and put on the reminder so that, subscribe and put on the reminder so that you'll be reminded once we go live tomorrow evening what do you think about Genesis 1, 2, 3? What are the things that always stand out to you when you read these chapters? What stood out to you in Matthew chapter 1? And I think this was a very interesting read through Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 to 16. The whole, this begat that. That was interesting and fun. Join me again tomorrow. Thank you for showing up. Share with your friends and let them join us tomorrow. Let's do this. Bible in one year, reading together and sharing our thoughts together. Have a lovely evening.